This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Academy Award winner Atticus Ross. Uh, how tiring does it get to, to hear that? Do you, do you ever get sick of it, or is it something that you're always just like, oh, I don't cool. very often, so it's, it's, it's all right. Um, who is in town for SIF uh, after working on Love and Mercy, which is a biopic about Brian Wilson. Um, and I think bio would be the wrong word myself. Okay, what would you, what would you describe as? Well, I, I would say that it, that it breaks a mold of what one is. Okay. Consider as a biopic. Okay, I think well, that could be fair. Would, would you say that's fair? What do you think? Uh, I mean, I just meant in the sense that it's biographical. Obviously, you're right that it is like, I mean, I think it's r unrealistic to define any film as really just boiled down to one genre, but in just the sense that it is based on a real life figure, right. that's all I'm trying to mean. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like that there has become almost a genre of musical bios that, that you know, I don't want to be negative about it, there <laughs> are some not so good ones. And I think, you know, when, when this came along, one of the things that's interesting about it is that it takes just two very static periods in, in time that cover quite a short amount of years, and then juxtaposes them against each other. And I think as a kind of uh, piece of filmmaking, it's a very, I just hadn't seen that before. No, that's an, it, was an inter it was an interesting to see the parallel between the young Ryan Wilson played by Paul Dano and the adult one played by John Cusick and sort of see the ramifications between the two of them. And um, I mean, obviously, like the psychological stuff is beyond probably what you normally get in a lot of biopics, um, for sure. Um, so let's start with, I guess, what intrigued you about this? You are a musician. I mean, obviously you're familiar with Brian Wilson. Was What was it that caught your attention with this movie? Was it the opportunity to have uh, work with some of his music? Was it the opportunity to work on a project about Brian Wilson? What was it that caught your attention in terms of well, to work all, all of those were actually reasons why initially I, I had thought I definitely don't want to do it um, because, you know, it's dealing with an iconic musician and that's risky, you know, especially someone, you know, who's argu arguably one of the greatest musical minds, you know, at the last... Um, well, I don't know how many years you want to say, but certainly in, in, in modern music, he's done, he made one of the greatest albums of all time, you know, universally accepted, of which this film, a portion of it, focuses on. Um, they're all reasons to, to feel nervous and, and worried. But it, it was really, the story of it was really that the guy I work with um, Brian Laux had been telling me about this script and for the reasons I just mentioned I'd been putting it off and putting it off and like I'm not sure that's the right kind of thing and, and then when I did read it I thought it was really um, I thought it was a very unusual and um, you know it didn't put any punches it delivered it in an incredibly original and unusual way. And Bill didn't have an idea of what the music would be. So after I'd read this script, um, we met up and I, you know, like I said to you before we started filming, I was a fan of the Beach Boys, but I'm not an obsessive Brian Wilson. <laughs> you know, I'm not like the Fort Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I knew from the mythology that there was supposedly all this music that had been recorded around that period of time that was never released or that our outtakes. And I said to Bill after reading the script what I thought would be interesting would be if we um, if we kind of used Brian's music 
within the school? And would, do you think Brian would be open to giving me his music? And, and then, um, I guess Bill liked the idea of that. And then, literally like a couple of weeks later, these hard drives arrived with <laughs> just all the master tapes from all those classic records. And then you realize as well that a lot of Brian's way of working, you know, I think, I think what comes across in the film, and certainly when you listen, because I've got a lot of stuff where it's him, you can hear him on the talkback mic. This is not a wishy-washy, kind of spaced out guy. This is a guy who is incredibly focused, knows exactly what he wants, um, and, you know, is uncompromising in, in getting to it. Um, so then we kind of embarked on the realities of, I think, it, in a sense, it, it, it falls into three categories. There's, um, there's some score, which are just original score, which we then brought him into. And a lot of it was right hmm. with my brother. Um, and um, so we would tune his voice or do whatever. Then there are uh, collages of, you know, like how the film opens, mm -hmm. um, where it's really hundreds of bits of. Uh, different Beach Boys songs, which are, you know, there might be a progression that we've built, but the idea is that you're surrounded by, you know, what becomes like a cacophony of kind of <laughs> madness. And there's another bit that was tricky as well in terms of, like, Bill said, well, you know, the scene where he goes underwater to get away from everybody talking about smile, and it was really smile in, in a sense that I think was his, you know, took him over the edge. But, um, Bill had this idea that we take many, well, I think it's a total of eight songs from Smile, and we have them playing simultaneously. Hmm. Now, to do that, obviously, you need to have them all in time with each other and in the same key and for them to make musical sense. So it was almost like taking them, putting them in a program called Live, tightening an hmm. You know, we found that the bass line from Heroes and Villains, if you filtered it down, could work throughout to keep it solid. Hmm. And then, you know, it was, it was a process. And then there, then there are also the kind of um, ones where it's um, taking um, what is a Beach Boys song, like the end montage, um, is uh, in my room and then till I die with a middle section where you hear four freshmen and it's very psychedelic. I mean, and we would so take uh, in my room, process it, the multi track heavily to kind of tell that story that Bill was trying to tell on the screen at the time. Then you know, we see the smack on the ear and we go inside his head and it goes into that kind of soundscape. Uh -huh. um, and then we come out the other side with Till I Die, again, heavily processed. So it, there were kind of a number of different things, or even the knives and forks, you know, when they... Yeah, 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 they're playing them. Yeah. All, all those things to age... It, it, it's funny because there's, there's, there's a lot of beach boys music in it obviously i mean there's music well I, yeah i mean i think that seems like when i'm watching this that it's one of the greatest challenges and maybe you can sort of tell me if i'm wrong or right but generally in film i think that sound is one of the hardest avenues because at least in my general sense like most of the time when people notice it is when something's fucked up yeah. um you generally want to enhance the scene, but you don't want to like be distracting that you become like the focus of the scene. So you're focused on this like middle area where you're almost forgotten. And this one seemed particularly tough because you're trying to then fit within this framework or whatever you want to call it of the Beach Boys um, 
experience, not necessarily that you just want to like replicate Beach Boys songs, but you don't want it to be so jarring that somebody's like listening to a Beach Boys song and then suddenly it's like, wait, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, like it, yeah, yeah. and that's, I think you did a very good job of fitting it all together brilliantly in the sense that like there are times where I like, I would be like, I don't know, like what, what was composed, what was naturally right. Beach Boys and stuff. Is that ultimately what you were hoping to achieve and that you would blend in seamlessly with what was there or what was your hope, best case scenario with this film? Well, the original, the original idea was that it, the, what, what I had originally imagined, this is before any shooting or anything, was that, it, that we made something, the score would be kind of like a grey album or something mm-hmm. like that. But when we started and I delivered some pieces where it was that, so you really couldn't tell yeah, what no. the source was, it didn't, it didn't resonate with Bill and everyone in the same way as when I made it, or we worked on it to make it more clear that this is obviously Brian's voice, mm-hmm. or this is obviously a part of a Beach Boys thing that had been worked into a new piece of music. Um, but I wanted to, obviously, when you're dealing with that kind of material, there is a fearful side because you don't want to, um, uh, you don't want to pull any punches, you know. Like you don't want to, you want to do what's best for the film at all times. But you also, or I also wanted to um, make sure that it was respectful to Brian. Oh. Um, and that, you know, it, well, we weren't ever using his music in a corny or shitty <laughs> way. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. And also, you know, and it was, you know, like I said, to, I said it to the guy before, I mean, it was an, it was an interesting and incredible experience um, for me and the people that work with me. Um, but I don't think it's one that I'd repeat. Because it is so much work. Yeah, I can imagine. Was there anything specific that you learned or took away from working with Brian Wilson and his music and well, learning about his I process? Mean, it, and was, it was an education in terms of like, um, in terms of uh, you know when you break down. There's lots of songs that you can, like you said, you went and you're like, oh, fuck, that's a Beach Boys, that's a Beach I know that song, I know that song. Yeah, no. When you break down those songs, they're incredibly complicated. You know, the actual musical education that one mm. has, um, you know, not to sound like an old fart, but it's kind of pop music nowadays. You know, you're lucky if you get a chord change. You know, <laughs> Brian's there's it's several different, key yeah. changes in one of his pop songs. You know, it's not, it's totally, he's writing on a different level to what pop music, you know, because ultimately they were, you know, Pet Sounds stands alone as a, as a pop album, as a classic, indelible piece of music, which will be one of the greatest pieces, you know, as a whole album, um, I think, for eternity. Um, but there's plenty of albums. I mean, let's not forget they're putting something like three or four albums out a year. That's crazy. That. Um, and there's a lot of um, you know, there's a lot of kind of poppy stuff leading into that. Not that that's not pop, but there's a sophistication within the instrumentation and how those are put together that. You, d- you don't you don't see it a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are, of course, there are people doing it, but if you listen to Radio Disney, it's uh, no, it's, t- it's terrible. Um, okay, so the film is Love and Mercy. Do you have any other projects that you want people to keep their eyes out for, or do you have a Twitter or Facebook, or is there any place that you suggest people keep their eyes for updates I'm on not, what you I'm have going? I'm not. I'm not really of the um, internet. I know how to work the internet. <laughs> but I'm, I, I don't have a, a, a Twitter or Instagram thing. I mean, hopefully, like the things that I've I've worked on will resonate enough so that people like you all want to talk about them. Fair enough. 
Uh, well, thank you so much, Atticus. I wish you the best of luck with this and everything going forward. Fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.